Right guys, well welcome back. Um, this morning I feel I feel a bit guilty today actually because um, what I've done is I feel like I've been on a date without you guys because what I've done is I've painted the bottom of the boat without taking any video of it. I just started on it yesterday, got myself carried away and I, I've done it. I've done it. I feel like I've, I feel like I've two times you but there you go right. Look, let's have a look underneath here first. So what we're going to do, underneath here you can see I've painted this a Bahama blue. Um, I just used the brush, lay on my back underneath here, just spent a couple of hours on a piece of board, reaching up and just painted it. I put um, a strip of um, masking tape here, you can see there's a dark blue line here, I put a strip of masking tape against that, painted up to it, and before it was dry, I pulled the masking tape away, because if you leave it till it dries, it flakes the paint off. So as soon as it was done, gone off for, you know, for half an hour, I pulled the masking tape off, and you can see I've got another piece of masking tape in here now because I'm ready to paint this uh, green next and I'm going to paint up to this line. I painted all underneath here and if we just bend down and have a little zoom under there you can see it's fairly good. It's turned out quite nicely, I'm very happy with that. What you can put on the bottom of these boats is you can put some um, anti-fouling paint they call it which is, it's basically got a bit of copper in it and a few other chemicals and if you're going to have your boat in the sea all um, summer then it stops the barnacles and everything from wanting to go on the bottom. This boat's going to spend most of its life in fresh water and it's going to, not going to be in the water all year, it's going to spend most of its life on this trailer, it's going to get took out in between. So I've happily just painted it with some normal paint on there. All right. And what I'm going to do, oh, I'll just show you this little bit I did here as well. We can just zoom in on here. These, the bottom of these keels here, um, you can see there's a little bit missed out there. And what I've done is I've painted right down as far as I can to these keels. And what people do is they do that, and then next time I get the boat lifted in the air, or I get, you know, maybe get it craned in somewhere or something like that, I take the paint with me and I quickly paint it on the bottom. Now I'm not too bothered about leaving that unpainted because this is a big old piece of cast iron here, um, or steel. And it's, it's not even showing any signs of rust at the moment, and it's not likely to rust very quickly either. So that's fine to just leave unpainted. It's already got paint on it from the last lot of paint, but that's fine. Now I'm going to show you what paints I've got. So this is a total here of £80 worth of paint, right? And this is all the paint we need to paint this boat. So I've got £80 worth, and I'll show you what I've got. First of all, on the bottom, let me show you this tin here first because that's Santex 10 year exterior gloss for exterior wood and metal 10 year guarantee Oxford blue. Okay, first paint we've got though is exactly the same Santex, you just can't read it there Bahama blue. So a tin of Bahama blue went on the bottom there. I painted it on with a brush like that. I used practically the whole tin on the bottom there. It's a tiny little bit left for any touching up and to do the bottom of them keels. That's the first one. Second tin, I've got a tin of the, exactly the same stuff, Santex 10 year exterior glass, exterior wood and metal, 10 year guaranteed, ultra mirror shine, Oxford blue, and what I'm going to do with the Oxford blue is I'm going to paint this line here, because so that we've got a nice line between the two, and the rubbing straight here, which was red originally, I'm actually going to paint that Oxford blue as well. Okay, so that's going on there. I've got this, Dulux Weather Shield, Buckingham's the colour, so that nice green colour there, sort of like almost a British racing green colour. Uh, exterior wood and glass, high, exterior wood and metal, high gloss finish again, and that's going on the sides here, from the blue line up to the rubbing straight there, on these sides here. So it's going to be blue, light blue, dark blue, green, dark blue here. You saw me put this on, Super one seal super flexible primer and undercoat, exterior wood, flexes to resist cracking and peeling. That's a good quality um, undercoat and primer to put on there. You know, it's dried beautifully overnight and you can feel it's rock hard there. And what we need is we need a good base to actually stick all this paint onto the boat. <laughs> and then finally, I've got Santex ultra smooth masonry paint, pure brilliant white. Um, flexes, dirt resistant, you know, picture of a lighthouse there, can't be bad can it? So, a 
I've got them and the white. The white is going to do all the cockpit here and I'm going to use it for the inside as well, that white. And then once I've finished I've got a bit of a garage job to do with it as well. So um, the primer and undercoat here, I said yesterday I had some left over. It took this whole tin and a tiny bit more, right, to do all the outside of the top side of this boat and inside with this primer and undercoat. We'd used a whole tin of that and a tiny bit more. So I would say if you used it sparingly, you could use a whole 750ml tin for inside and the top sides only. If you had to prime and undercoat this whole boat at 19 metres long, I would say you're going to be looking at a couple of litres worth of this stuff, I reckon. So that's that one. Um, the whole of that tin got used on the bottom. And I suspect there'll be nothing left of this green tin as well by the time we finish. I may even end up getting another one of them. So £80 worth of paint. Um, all bought from B&Q's yesterday um, and the day before. Uh, some, most of it on special offer of some sorts. I mean this here was only £15 for a whole seven and a half litre tub. So like this time of year, any bank holiday, May bank holiday, August bank holiday, all these DIY shops have got fantastic special offers on. And the final thing we've got, some non sealed yacht, lot, yacht varnish, gloss, um, and I used that. You can see up on the bit on the tabernacle there, the bottom of the mast there. Uh, that's gone on there, and there's a few wooden bits inside as well that are going to get varnished. And the mast, the boom and that, I've used that gloss on them. Um, I already had that, so I haven't counted that in the in the cost of it. Okay, so what do we what do we think about the paint? Well, um, I can buy marine paint. I've said this before. Mar that lot of marine paint would be two hundred pound. I could use two pack paint, one pack paints, all these sort of fantastic things. Um, my consideration, as I've said before, is uh, what am I going to use this boat for? This boat is generally going in fresh water, it's going to spend its life on the trailer. If it goes in the sea it won't matter, but it's going to spend its life on the trailer. It's almost certainly not going to spend any time on a mooring. So I'm happy to use them paints, right, because they're economical. You know, and if you look in uh, a lot of the, um, on the internet and everything, there's a lot of debate about whether you should bother to get marine paint anyway, because marine paint costs an absolute arm and a leg, and half the people say it's not worth it anyway. Um, other people say it is, some people say that white will, this white will yellow. Um, you know, I'm giving it a whirl, I'm trying to do this as, as, as economically as possible. So there you go, so we've made some good progress and you can see here as well, if you look across the top, look how smart that looks in the sunshine. Just, just because we've got some white primer on it and you can see the old girl's starting to come together a little bit now and it's starting to look reasonably decent already just by virtue of having some primer. It's a really windy day. Um, eldest daughter has decided the new, new cameraman is eldest daughter, so camera lady. Um, and we're not sure whether we're going to get ourselves down the side of this with the green paint or whether we're going to go and do inside. And I think, given the wind, we're actually going to do inside because if we do the outside now, what we'll end up is we'll end up with uh, bits of dust, bits of hedge and some of this blossom getting blown onto the paintwork. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to go and do some painting inside of the white. Um, we'll take a, a quick video of that. We'll tag it onto the end of this. Top coating with the white Santex. Um, and uh, we'll see you inside in a second. Okay, well we're inside again. Now I've got a little pot of paint down here. Let me just show you that as well. It's an old celebrations tin. What you should always do when you're painting, and this is a good bit of advice for any painting, is um, make sure don't paint directly out of the tin unless you know you're going to use the whole tin's worth. Because what happens is you get your brush and you're painting away and then like a hair gets on it or a bit of dirt gets on it, put it back in the tin, another bit of dirt gets on it and you wipe it off on the side. And what you end up with is a tin that's half full of dirt at the end. So always get yourself a, an old tub like that, an old margarine tub or something. Tip some paint out of the carton or out of the, pot, out the big pot into a little pot, it's much more manageable and you don't end up with a great big thing of paint all contaminated and everything. Okay, so, I've got a brush here, any old brush really, decent, it's decent quality, sorry, any old, I didn't mean that, I meant decent quality any old brush though. Um, putting some paint on and you can see all the priming we did yesterday here, looks quite good and uh, we're just going to, I'll put it, a little paint pot a bit closer so we don't have to keep moving. 
put it in there like that. And you can see we're just going to get on it now and start painting. That's no good with the paint pot there because it keeps. It looks like it's going to fall over all the while. I can't be dealing with that. So there we go. Just uh, being careful not to get it on the edges there. And I think this is a two coat job, this one. It'll give reasonable coverage. Um, this is a water, but this Santex, out of all them paints I showed you, this Santex paint is the only one that's water based. All the others are, um, you know, you need to clean your brush in white spirit. This one you can clean your brush underneath the tap. And I know it uh, doesn't sound very environmentally friendly, but in my mind, um, which is a little bit messed up anyway, in my mind you've got to have some chemicals in your paint right, if it's going to be any good. And I always fancy that the best sort of paint is one that's got some chemicals in it in the old fashioned way and um, you know, you've got to wash the off your brush with white spirit. I just fancy that's a better paint, I fancy it'll stick better and it'll be a better quality finish. And you know, you only have to, you know, if you've used any paints before much, you'll see that using when you come to use high gloss paint that's actually not water soluble you'll notice you know generally what they probably call trade paints you'll notice there's a hell of a difference in the quality of the two you know um, there we go just cut in around there nicely and you can see it's a, it's a reasonable coverage on this um, you know as you would expect with any quality paint a reasonable coverage um, but you can see when I've done this bit I'll show you you will see that the underneath even though we've got a couple of coats on you can see it's just grinning through a tiny little bit there um, and what we're going to do now me and eldest daughter is we're going to say goodbye to you guys and we're going to rattle on with some paint in here with the radio on and uh, in an hour or two's time we shall have our painting in we might even put a bit of varnish on we're painting the white down to this level here you can see where the white was before we're going right down to that level there and um, let it dry over today and maybe put another coat in it tomorrow and then once all the white's dry on the floor here I've got some old um, some acrylic floor paint in the garage some black acrylic floor paint and once the floor once all the walls are done I'm going to get back in here with the hoover and get remember I told you about them few bits that were drying out when we were flaking well they've flaked off now we'll get back in here with the hoover and uh, we'll we'll um, hoover all that out and we'll get some black paint on the floor once we've done all the white bit of varnish in the doorway there and we'll actually be finished so right daughter painting let's go Hi guys, welcome back. Um, you can see uh, the weather's really picked up now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give this, uh, going to give this hull a bit of a paint. You can see I've got the green paint here. I've mixed it, stirred it well. I've got a small roller tray here, little roller with a foam um, roller on it. There, little roller brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going over this now with you can see I'm rolling the paint on like that and it'll look a bit like orange peel as you're doing it but that's okay and I'm only showing you the theory of this and then I'm going to get on with it then because otherwise it'll all be everywhere so you roll it on like that and then the idea is that you tip it off with the brush that's what they do so you go across it with the brush like that I haven't quite had enough on my roller there but let me just show you the top bit here where I did have enough on my roller If you look up close in there now, if you just come out here, Anna, just come out here and look at the shine on that now, you can see that's what you do. Right? So don't be skimpy about the paint like I just was then, otherwise you won't get enough on there and you'll have to go back over it. And you need to go back in next to the noise. Right, and then you just go along like that. Rolling it on, 
and tipping it off. That's the way you do it. And uh, what's going to happen now is that me and my good assistant here are going to do this between us. So it's basically a two-man job. One person rolls it, one person tips it off. You can see that's a striking beautiful colour that is, isn't it? Hey, look at that. And by doing this, we can get a fair bit of paint on quite quickly. There we go, look at all that, eh? That's beautiful, that is, isn't it? That's an absolutely stunning green, that is, isn't it? Be uh, good if I don't pay my licence and I don't stay for the waterways and I want to camp. You know, sneaky river camp, be able to hide in the bushes with this. By doing this, we hope to get down it fairly quickly. There we go. Right. Let's put a tiny bit more on here. Don't, like I say, don't be too skimpy about this. You can see I'm just rolling it in there. Don't be skimpy about how much you put in, otherwise you'll have some patches where it hasn't quite gone on. Especially when you're changing colour like this. If we were over painting some already green on there, you know, you could probably use a bit less, but, you know, we're, we're going for a brand new colour here, so we really need to get a fair depth of paint onto this. Okay. Is I'll just put that down there a second, get the brush. I'm just going to do in this top bit here. There we go, look at that, just come round here now and I know it's gonna be a bit I know it's gonna be a bit windy, but if you come and have a look at that close up, you can see that's not a bad finish, is it? Right, come on cameraman, to it! Hey guys, well, uh, you can see we've done it. And that that took just over 45 minutes for me and eldest daughter to do that. Uh, me rolling it with a roller. Her tipping it off with the brush, you know, and if you just want to get a, you know, a look down the side there and a look at that, I mean, you know, it, you can't say fairer than that, that is a decent finish on that, you know, that's a really nice finish. I've used half the tin of paint for that, um, so I've got enough for another coat should I want to put it on. I don't know whether to or not, I'll see how it dries, but, you know, there's certainly enough paint in there. I'll probably get another coat on it just to make it harder, but there's certainly, you know, that's good enough for the time being. Um, couple of things to do there you know we started off fairly quickly there what you should what we should have done is we should have started at the very front here and I should mention that you should always like roll it up to a wet edge so just systematically work downhill I started a little bit here in the middle so that you could actually see it and then when we got started on our own I wish whipped up to the front and caught back up so always go to a wet edge and just keep following down systematically um, the other thing is, you know, just be careful of how much pressure you put on the roller. If you're rolling like that and you're putting too much pressure on, you'll see either side of the roller, you'll see lines. I'll show you here in this. As you roll it, you'll see a line there in the paint and a line there in the paint. And that means you're putting too much pressure on and it's pushing the paint out the roller. So gently does it back and two. You know, this is not a thing you're going to push down and get the paint to come out on. Let it just roll on there and it'll smear itself over there quite happily. Um, and the other thing is with the brush, again with the brush, you're not going to, it's not emulsion, you know, it's not watery paint, you're going to be able to go like that. If you want to get paint in the cracks or something, 
do it slowly, slowly back and to like that, and uh, that'll get it done. What I always do as well is let me just get this. This is a tip for you as well. If you're using paint or dry when it gets into the air, so um, do you want to watch the paint dry? No, we don't. Right. So what you do is, if you're going to use this again, you know, and there's a good chance we're going to use this roller again. I showed you that's just a. Um, this was one ninety nine from B and Q. This was roller foam thing and I've got a spare foam thing wrap it up in cling film like that because if the air can't get to it right it's not going to dry okay so if you want to use this again keep the air out of it wrap it up like that in a bit of cling film just like that no air is going to get to that and you can use that again same with the brush we're going to use the brush again tomorrow uh, probably for a second coat of this pop it like that in the uh, in a bit of cling film like that there you go no air can get to that now that's not going to uh, go off overnight and that saves you washing it off with any white spirit and the final bit is if you're using a paint I know I'm a too close there if you're using a paint that's um, water based, you know, like an emulsion that you use for your walls and that, then you can quite happily wash it off with some water. But this isn't going to wash off with some water. Um, I've got a bit of white spirit here from B&Q's. Got it at the same time. Put a bit on the rag like that. And then all you have to do is you just get your hand like that, look, rub it like that, and you can see all the paint coming off dead simply, right? If you were washing that in hot soapy water now, Right, all you would do is set that paint on your hand. There you go. If you've got a skin allergy or dermatitis or something, you might not want to do this, but you know, if you have, then you probably want to be wearing gloves anyway. Now, I don't wear gloves because I can't feel feel properly without with gloves on. It just doesn't feel right. So there you go. Washes it, wipes all off, dead simply like that, and then you can go and wash that. Okay, right, catch you next time and we'll paint the top sides. Oh, the other little bit I forgot to mention is in half an hour's time, we've got to take this tape off here. So we're going to give it half an hour or so to set and, uh, and then we're going to take that tape off. If we leave it till tomorrow, we'll pull the paint off at the same time. Okay, so even if we're going to give this another coat, tonight we need to get that tape off. We'll put a fresh piece on tomorrow. Right, join us next time.